While everybody knows that hackers are out there, most people don't really worry about their personal accounts being broken into by hackers. I mean, I think I'm worried about like emails because there's just so much personal information that goes through there, you know, all the password resets. I'd say so, but I don't really use social media too much. I mean, if I was a target for some reason, I would hate to see charges off my bank account that I didn't authorize. There's a little bit of worry that crosses my mind, I guess, when it comes to like every now and then I'll see people get hacked. After all, what exactly would a hacker do with personal accounts like social media, email, and maybe your home Wi-Fi? On this episode, we're gonna show five different ways that hackers can make money by breaking into the accounts of ordinary people. If you were to ask the average person why a hacker would want to break into their accounts, most people wouldn't be able to think of many reasons. Aside from targeting my grandma, probably getting access to like Venmo or Cash App or whichever ones I have. I'd probably say Instagram just because they can post, you know, whatever pictures and whatever type of message they want to send out to, you know, the people I follow and the people that follow me. Probably stuff along the lines of like my email, anything that has to do with like business related stuff. The first way that hackers can make money by breaking into accounts like emails or social media is compelling phishing attacks against friends, family, or coworkers. Once accessed, Hackers can send information about scams to your friends and family, or even frighten your family into paying a fake ransom. In 2021, a hacker took over a woman's Facebook profile and used it to sell non-existent items on Facebook Marketplace. Once a buyer had paid up on the non-existent item, the hacker would lead them directly to the victim's door, leading to several dangerous confrontations. I don't know what to do. That I really don't know what to do. I, I just need to get that word, get the word out to, that is not me, it is not me. Oh my gosh. How do you even deal with that? Like, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I know one person, they got hacked and they're trying to get their account back through Instagram, but they couldn't and <laughs> their account was used for cryptocurrency. So that person like posts and stuff, telling people to, hey, go to this link and you know make an account on this cryptocurrency uh, website and buy some crypto. The second way that hackers can make money by breaking into accounts is by stealing and reselling digital assets, like V-Bucks from Fortnite or Dogecoin, a popular digital currency. The way hackers can do this is either by phishing, cracking passwords, or by tricking users into running malicious files, which actually steal their accounts. Hackers breaking into Fortnite accounts with password crackers were able to make almost a million dollars a year simply stealing and reselling Fortnite skins. Oh, I should just do that. Wow, okay. That's, I'm assuming that probably goes pretty rampant in Fortnite just because of all those skins they have in there. Okay, that's crazy. That means any digital asset that's protected behind a weak password is a very tempting target for any hacker who wants to make money. It might be hard to imagine that your home Wi-Fi network might be incredibly valuable to hackers. But in fact, if the right hacker is able to break into your Wi-Fi network, it's fairly easy for them to use it as a money-making enterprise. From redirecting victims to scam websites all the way to redirecting criminal traffic for other criminals, hackers can make your router work for them while exposing you to the risks. Yeah, so home networking is interesting and you're right, typically most people don't think that their home is necessarily a target. But after, you know, 2020 and COVID lockdown, there's a significant portion of the workforce that works from home. There is an example where LinkedIn, um, if you're familiar, had a hack and that was done from somebody who was using their company's laptop and company information at home. Um, they use this to break into their personal website. They went on LinkedIn, surprisingly, and found other employees that worked there that they could potentially target. Um, from there, they found a person who had their own personal website that they were able to exploit and find a way in. And from that web server, they were able to pivot uh, brute forcing into an SSH session. And uh, from there, they were able to access LinkedIn. No, oh, all right. I didn't even know that was a thing. Okay, so they'll, they'll take advantage of easy victims then through that, like kind of that way. Interesting, okay, not expected that. The fourth way that hackers are able to make money by breaking into accounts is through botnets, which are able to take thousands of compromised accounts, link them together, and use them to commit fraud, scams, or even take down websites with powerful attacks. Oftentimes, we hear about botnets 
in the context of a distributed denial of service attack, where the attacker commands the botnet army to target a specific organization or website in an attempt to overwhelm its network resources and knock it offline. The people in control of the botnet can monetize their effort by renting out some or all of the botnet to somebody else in order to perform that type of attack. Yeah, wow. That's intense. The final way that hackers can make money by breaking into accounts which have access to video or photos is through extortion and blackmail. Once a hacker gains access to your account, they will gather all the photos and videos they deem to be juicy or interesting and sell the information on a black market website which caters to extortionists. These extortionists will then purchase the pack and attempt to contact the victim, bullying and otherwise trying to extort them into paying money in order to avoid having the photos being released. I've heard about that a good amount of times, especially with, you know, girls and having their, you know, like nudes and stuff like that being leaked, so. I think that was the one I most expected, like, them to try to do. Wow. So how do you prevent something like that from happening? No matter who you are, hackers can find a way to turn a profit off of your online presence. While nobody's perfect at security, there are a lot of different ways that the average person can take action to make it harder for a hacker to take over their accounts. Yeah, so I just use strange passwords. So just passwords that have like random letters and numbers and symbols. I use whatever apps have like this two-face authentication uh, factors. Yeah, I tend to vary passwords because I know hackers can buy tranches of the passwords from like if they break into like Club Penguin, they get your old password. I mean, I don't share my password with people. <laughs> That's probably about it. <laughs> I lock my note, my notes on my phone that has the passwords in it. <laughs> So the next time that someone tells you that they're not worried about getting hacked, you might want to let them know that they could have more to worry about than they think. Thanks for watching and stay safe. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.